Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, music team, for ushering us uh, sa magandang presensya ng Panginoon. How many of you believe that God is here in our midst this afternoon? Right, you're in the right place every Saturday, 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Thank you for joining us live. For those of you again, na nasa online, thank you for joining us. Kung nasan man po kayo ngayon. I'm Pastor Jeff, and I know some of you are first-timer. Thank you for joining us. I received some uh, a text from a friend, uh, the invited, so thank you po for joining us this afternoon. We're starting a brand new series. Uh, we just finished uh, a series, of course, that's why we're starting a brand new series. And we've talked about the gospel for five weeks. We've talked about everything about the gospel because it's Holy Week. And uh, if we can encapsulate in one idea lang po what the gospel did to us, we have been justified. Everybody say justified. Yun lang po yun. Kung meron kayong gustong maalala, ano po ba yung na-accomplish ng gospel sa atin? May utang ka kay Lord because of our sin, and then hindi ka makapasok sa presensya niya because may utang ka, but now the, the utang was settled. We have been justified just na ngayon. Ang tingin sa atin ni Lord ngayon, just not because of what we did, but because solely of what Jesus did. And hopefully yung gospel, tumimu sa atin, and we've learned so much about the gospel. It's by faith alone, and God chose us, stuff like that. And sino ba naman hindi matutuwa last week? May bonus pa kayo. Sino rito yung nagamit mo na yung best news ever mo? Na ginawa mong paperweight, o ginawa mong pan display, o yung iba sa supot pa hanggang ngayon. In fact, iba sa inyo, nasa under your chair pa. Hindi mo man lang nag-abalang kunin sa ilalim ng upuan mo, right? And we've learned for five weeks that we have to proclaim the gospel. Yun yung ending natin, that this gospel that we receive is meant to be proclaimed. It's meant to be shared. You see, proclaiming the gospel, yes, it's important, but we're gonna dig deeper about the gospel for the next six weeks. Proclaiming the gospel is important, but God also called His church to do something equally significant. So not just gospel proclamation, but gospel demonstration. So this is a brand new series. Ang ganda, no? Gospel demonstrated. Yung iba para nahilo pa. Gos, gos? Oh, oh, gospel. Oh, gospel yan, right? So nahati lang. We're gonna talk about the gospel being demonstrated. Hearing it, okay, from you. Nagsishare ka nung brand, uh, best news ever. So hearing it from you, sina siya mo sa office mate, classmate mo, is the starting point. It opened their minds. But when doing the gospel, not just sharing or proclaiming, doing the gospel, what do you mean by that? You're living out what you're proclaiming opened their hearts. Are you listening? Ma, 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 mabibilib sila sa'yo dahil grabe yung buhay mo. Ganyan ka before, ganyan ka na ngayon. Ang sama mo before, mas masama ka ngayon. Diba? Malamang hindi mo convinced sa gospel mo, right? But, but seriously, most of us, lalahatin ko na tayo lahat dito, we were convinced of the gospel nung nakita mo nililive out ng nanay mo. Meron marito, yung bumait yung nanay mo. Diba? Dati lamang pa siya kay Jesus, sampung lang utos ni God, sa kanya labing isa, diba? Pero ngayon yung nanay mo, parang ang bait na patient na sa'yo, pag madumi yung bahay, okay lang anak, malinis naman sa langit. <laughs> Gusto mo ba pumunta ron, anak? Okay. <laughs> Ngayon, okay. So, nakita mo yung difference. Nakita mo sa tatay mo, nakita mo sa anak mo. In fact, as we are doing service here, there's another youth service sa kabila, sabay tayo niya, sa Montenegro, 4 p.m. then. And most of the parents, nung mga estudyante na yon, nakita sa anak nila. I mean, of course, a case in point, yung mga campus minister natin, mga tomador, pumapasok ng laseng, naka-red horse, gin bulag, kung ano-ano yung mga iniinom na. Tapos, nakilala nung pastor natin na naka-station sa University of Makati, and then na born again, na bagong buhay, uh, lived out the gospel. Yung mga magulang, anak, sino ka? Ilabas mo yung anak ko, hindi ikaw yan. <laughs> Bakit ang taas ng grades mo? Anong ginagawa mo, anak? Di ba yung hindi maniwala na nabago yung buhay mo? That's why gospel, uh, uh, yes, we have been justified, but look at the word. We are now being sanctified. Everybody say being. Okay? It's a process. So kung hindi pa mabait ngayon yung born again, nakakilala mo, tinan mo yung katabi mo, tinan mo lang, tinan mo lang, please lang. After five weeks, baka iba na itsura niyan. Sa ngayon, tinan mo muna yung wallet mo, ipasok ko sa bago ng nila. Okay. Mababago yan. We are being sanctified. Sabihin mo sa katabi mo, hindi pa tapos ay si Lord. Kapit lang. Sabihin mo, yung isa naman, sabihin mo, huwag kang mag-alala. 
Tatapusin ka rin niya. Okay, hindi, 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 hindi pa tapos si Lord. Babaguhin ka rin niya, okay? So, right now, that's why today, we're gonna talk about the effect of the gospel in us because we received it. And not only it is in us, God will use the effect of the gospel through us. There will be a demonstration, hopefully, sa buhay natin. If our faith is genuine, it will be unmistakable. It will be seen in our actions. There will be demonstration, right? Martin Luther said this, We are saved by faith alone. Very important. But the faith that, is, that saves is never alone. It should be backed up. It should be evidenced by something. Kaya minsan, ang dami mo kilala, born natin pa talaga to. Mambihira, tatlo pa rin asawa, nag-church lang sa big trip, pero yung buhay, tignan natin, malaman natin because it will be evidenced by the gospel demonstration. Do people around you see the distinction? Nung naborn again ka at hindi, wala mo, mounted na ako sa church ng victory, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Tapos pagkatapos, meron ka ba yung bente dyan? Nangungutang ka pa rin ka ngayon, yung pa rin ang tatak mo. We have to demonstrate it to the outside world. And listen up, as we jump to the first week this, uh, on this series, one of the most visible, everybody say visible. One of the most visible demonstration of the gospel to the outside world, to the unbelievers, yung mga gusto mo ma-reach out, is when we are facing adversity. How we handle adversity. When we're, how do we handle trials and difficulties and tragedies, problema? Right? I stumbled upon this um, book, Adversity Quotient. And of course, it was in the 90s na introduced po ito by, by, the, by Dr. Paul Stoltz. And adver, Adversity Quotient, yes, may IQ. Sino nito matas ang IQ? <laughs> Ako EQ lang, okay? Kasi nag, no Q, okay? Okay, barbecue. Iba yon, manana Q, iba yon. Yung mataas, yung IQ, EQ, talo sila daw ng mga matataas ang Adversity Quotient. Adversity quotient, according to the author, simply means the capacity of the person to deal with the adversities of his or her life as such, yun daw po yung science of human resilience. How you handle pag dumating yung news na may stage 4 cancer ka. How you handle the news na hindi ka pala pasado doon sa UP entrance exam. What do you do? You akala mo, oo, una ang tagal mo ng ligaw, pray. Anim na buwan mong hinahatid sundo. Binigyan mo ng bagong iPhone. Lahat na ginawa mo. Nung nakumpleto na yung appliances niya sa bahay, sabi niya, sorry, hindi kita type. Ha? <laughs> Kinumpleto mo lahat sa rustans? Sasasabi mo, hindi mo ako type? Ibalik lahat yan. Ito lahat ng resibo. Katunayang akin yan. Diba? But you see, yeah, adversity caution is great. Yung mga naging successful without God in the picture, human resilience. But we know people na hindi pinalad, na naging successful pag dumating yung panahon. In fact, some of you may, umi- may iniisip na kayong tao ngayon, na nung dumating yung dagok ng paghihirap at mga trials and adversities, they went the other way. Some of them, tumalikod kay Lord. Right? Nakakilala kayong ganun. Christian na Christian, active sa church, bigla may dumating na dagok sa buhay, sinisi si Lord. Grabe ka, Lord, nag a na ako. Ako pa yung nagkasakit. Samantala itong katabi ko, mukhang hindi nagtatight, ba di mo rito binigay? Okay? <laughs> Meron ba ganun dito? <laughs> yung parang feeling mo, bakit sa akin, Lord? So tumalikot ka kay Lord. Hindi to yung Diyos na yan. Some of them, hindi rin pinalad, uh, dinapuan ng depression. Some, uh, 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 nalulung sa mga iba't ibang bisyo. Because of too much trials, adversity sa buhay, iba po ang tinakbuhan nila. Okay? Some of them, substance abuse. But worse, may mga tao na hindi nila nakayanan, they committed suicide. Those are sheer human resilience. Thank be to God. Tayo mga born again, hindi natin to haharapin na tayo lang. As Christians, we are blessed because we don't face it with sheer human capability and ability. May kasangga tayo. May nauna sa atin. How we handle adversity determines the level of our faith in God. That's why today, ang first week natin, is how you deal with adversities in life. And for the next six weeks, na natitira natin, iba't iba pong angulo ng demonstration of gospel, the way you treat others. Lahat po yung pag-uusapan natin. Okay ba? Would you stay with me for the next five weeks? Six weeks yata? Ewan ko, okay, okay. Walang uwian, dito lang tayo. Mag-ano tayo dito? Mag-camp tayo dito for one and a half months. Okay. 
may uwi ang naman. So, for the next six weeks, tayo mag-uusap about the gospel demonstration. Why don't we close our eyes? Let's bow down our heads. Pagdasal natin itong series na to. Panginoon, kami po ay nagsusumamo sa iyo. Lord, these are just, I mean, kami Lord, I'm just merely the speaker here. Lord, wala naman kaming capacity to change people's heart. It's you, Lord God, ang nag-open ng heart sa mga tao, Lord. So those people who are watching and here in this auditorium, Lord, would you just minister to us? That as Christians, we have, Lord God, the grace, the Holy Spirit in us to really fight this fight of faith till the end. So Lord, tulungan mo kami, Lord God, that this series will minister to us and not just to us, to the people na nasa isip na namin iimbitahin ko to. In the next few weeks, I'm going to bring that person. And Lord, right now, yung mga tao nasa isip namin, we just touch their hearts to open their hearts, Lord God, to the gospel as well. So Lord, we lift up to this series. May you be honored and glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to look at the book of James. If you have your Bible with you, napakaganda ng book of James. If you're a practical person, hindi ka ganong ayaw mo ng mga malalalim na theological verses, ang James po is really, uh, he, ang concern lagi ni James, the brother of Jesus, is really Christian living. Okay? And when we talk about adversity, unang salvo pa lang niya. Alam natin may pinagdadaanan yung kanya sinusulatan. Kaya kung ikaw ngayon, look up here, sasabihin mo, hindi para sa akin to, wala akong pinagdadaanan eh. Perfect ang buhay ko. Sino sa inyo yung perfect yung buhay mo? Yasin, pwede ka nang kunin ni Lord ngayon. Yung wala nang babaguhin sa'yo, wala naman. Alright, so para sa atin lahat to. Maari may pinagdaanan ka, pero minsan, sabi nga no, isang nabasa ko, every, our lives here on earth is like, there's always a storm. It's either you are about to enter a storm, you're in the midst of the storm, or you just came out of storm. But either way, God has a purpose. Ba't tayo dumadaan sa mga adversities and trials sa buhay? So, tinan natin ito sa book of James. Sabi ni James, James, a servant of God. I love that. Hindi niya hinighlight yung James, the brother of Jesus Christ. Katabi niyang natutulog, gumawa niya ng karpintero pa lang siya. Ako tag-aabot. Hindi siya sinabing ganon. This humility, of course, si James, kinala natin ito, isa to sa mga kumukontra kay Jesus that time, nung hindi, pa, hindi sila naniniwala Messiah yung kapatid nila, eh, paano ka nga maniniwala? Tatlongpong taon mo nakikita naguhugas ng pinggan. I don't know kung, kung ang pinaggagawa nila ni Jesus ng bata, but, but here's a man who was tro- totally transformed after the resurrection of Christ. Nakita niya na he's really a servant of God. At ito po yung na-address niya to the 12 tribes in Tagig. Hindi, hindi pala tribes ng Tagig. Dalawang, labing dalawang tribes lang. Kalaan ba? In-address niya to sa labing dalawang tribes ng mga Israelites scattered among the nations. So this was the first, or one of the first diaspora. Ang sabihin po, because of persecution, sila po ay kinalat sa buong mundo. Nagtakbuan sila from Jerusalem uh, in the book of Acts. It was, says, it was said there na meron pong severe persecution and everyone left. Yung mga disciple lang po na iwan. So, if we're gonna talk about adversity, baka mo, these people were harshly persecuted by the Romans and uh, ito pong mga persecution nila hindi katulad nung sa atin ngayon. Di ba, sino sa iti born again? Yan na persecute ka na sa office. Ano mga persecution nyo? Ber- verbal lang, di ba? Uy, ikaw ba yung burn again? Ayan na naman yung burn again. Ayaw mag-yossi. Ayan lang, ayan lang, ayan lang persecution mo. Bigyan kita na idea ng persecution nila. Niluluto lang naman sila ng buhay sa kumukulong mantika. Ayan naman din gusto maging chicharo ng buhay. Buhay, ha? Pagka naman gusto mag-party ng mga, Roman, mga Romano, ng mga high uh, 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 ranking official, sinusunog lang naman sila na sinasawsaw sa tar para maging, maging, uh, maging ilaw sila the whole night. Hinahati sila sa gitna, pinapakain sa leon, eh, hindi naman ganun katindi persecution nila. So come to think of it, ko, if you feel you're being persecuted as a Christian, when this was written, the persecution, wala, walang panama yung mga persecution natin ngayon na hindi ka lang nilike yung post mo daily bread sa Facebook, alright? So tinan natin, we're gonna talk two, three things today. We're gonna talk about the response whenever we face adversity, and what's the result of that, and eventually, what's the future reward? What's, 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 what's to look forward to? Okay? So this is some sort of a journey. So ang mahalaga po, foundational po, is our response when we face trial. And James is telling his listeners, his viewers, his readers about the proper response. And hopefully we can relate to this. What's the response? Consider. Everybody say consider. You know what, I can preach for one hour sa isang word lang na itong consider because this word is loaded with meaning. At pag sinabi natin consider, it means to lead. 
Okay? It means the original Greek word that was used to lead. Hindi tayo makarelate ngayon because yung word na consider, masyadong na-water down, isn't it? Tama ba? Pag sinabi, uy, consider mo naman yung proposal ko. Oh, sige, I'll think about it. Di ba? Anybody here? Nambola ka na ng ahente. O oh, sige, nagko-consider ko yan, ha? Kaya natatawa, hindi mo naman, hindi mo babasahin yung binuksan na proposal. Meron ba dito ganon? Di ba? When you say consider, itatry mo yan. Kahit ganong bola pa sa'yo, sige naman, no, kumuha ka na ng produkto ko. Karamihan na kumuha niya, nagamit agad. Ano ba yan? Memorial plan, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> I-consider. The word consider means to lead. It's a picture that's of leading his or her mind through a reasoning process to arrive at a conclusion. Hindi siya, consider mo to. Oh, sige, try ko na. No, 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 no. There's a process na kaarkibat na to. Hindi siya biglaan. When James uh, 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 wrote this, consider, it's a command calling for action. Command calling for action. Hindi yan yung petics lang, consider ko yan, and you let just sit it on your desk. No, 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 no. It demands action. So it's a picture of leading through a conclusion, pero there's, there's a process. Ano yung process? Do, sabi sa inyo, napaka-loaded na tong word na consider pa lang eh. It involves careful thought. Kasi yung uutos ni James is something counterintuitive. It's counter-cultural, counter lahat, counter to sa lahat. So, sabi ni James, consider this. Have a careful thought nung iuutos ko. Excited yung mga tao. Ano yung sasabihin niyo? Consider pa lang, excited na ako. Okay, careful thought. And also, there's a conscious judgment. Hindi ito yung, ang gagawin ko na lang, sige na, sige na, i-consider ko na nga yan, kung ano man yan. No, no, no. There's a conscious judgment, and once you decide it, there's a complete commitment to the conclusion you've arrived to. Are you listening? Alright, so malinaw po. Okay? Pag sinabi natin, consider this. What is kailangan i-consider? Consider it. Ito na kasi, pure joy. Not half-hearted, but pure joy. And he's talking to the Christians, to my brothers and sisters. Pag sinabi natin, pure joy, the trial itself was an occasion of joy. Okay? Was not an occasion of joy. Kasi sabihin niyo ba, ano yung pastor pag may cancer? Yay, may cancer yung nanay. Ganun ba yan? Matutuwa ka ba? Yay, bagsa ka sa UP. Praise God, magpa-ice cream ta. Is that what this verse is talking about? Pag meron ka adversity, you consider pure joy na magpapapiesta ka. Papiesta tayo, namatay na rin sa wakas. Ganun ba? Is that what this verse is talking about? No. The trial itself was not an occasion of joy, but it could promote joy by becoming an occasion for producing stamina in the life of a committed believer. Ang response mo is joy. Listen up, this is very important. It's a state of being more than an emotion. It's a decision more than an emotion. Mga babae dito, emotional kayo. Pagka binigyan ka ng load, ang saya mo. Nakuha ng scam, naulungkot ka na. So, it's based on happenings. The happiness is based on happenings. But joy is different. Joy is really a state of being. To have joy, according to Theodore Epp. Theodore Epp is a pastor and a radio evangelist in the early 90s. To have, uh, to have joy does not necessarily mean we will be hilarious and laughing about the trials we're experiencing. That's not the point. But it means we will have a deep, Seated confidence. I love that word. Look up here. Wag mo nyo muna picturean. Makinig muna kayo. Sabi nyo nga po, deep seated confidence. Deep seated confidence. Nakabaong talaga to. You have this confidence that God knows what He's doing. God, bakit naman ngayon pa nagkasakit tong anak ko? God, bakit ngayon, of all the time ngayon pa ako mabangkarap, Lord, nagtatides ako, ginagawa ko lahat, wala akong kasalanan, matinu akong tao. Lord, ba't ngayon pa? Lord, mali timing mo, mali yata kalendar mo sa langit. Ha? Kasi a day is a thousand years sa'yo dyan, Lord. No, 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 no. But it's a deep-seated confidence that God knows what He's doing. And that the results will be not for your glory because oftentimes, kaya gusto mong mapush yung agenda mo is for your glory. No, no, no. Every time God does something through us, it's for His glory. But also, hindi siya kill joy and our own good. It's good for you, 
but it's glory to God. Are you listening? It's an, a, a, an assurance, alam ni God yan. It's rule joy, and mixed joy, without a mixture of sorrow. Hindi siya pwedeng, consider it my joy, my counting sorrow. Or, may joy marami, pero merong namang drop of grief. No, 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 no. Hindi ganon. It's pure joy. Madali ba to? Of course not. I mean, pag may pinagdadaanan kang cancer, or I was talking to a brother this week, antin din ang pinagdaanan niya, medical condition, hindi ito madali. And that's why we need to be confident that God knows what He's doing. The outworking of the gospel changes our perspective. Napansin nyo, hindi changes the situation. It changes our perspective when dealing with trials. You know why? Because God is more concerned in changing you rather than your circumstances. Are you listening? Most of the time, gusto mo mabago yung circumstances. Gusto mo mabago, mabago. Pas, ano, Lord, gumaling na siya. Lord, bumalik na siya. Lord, ma- tumino na siya. Eh, sabi ni Lord, hindi. Gagamitin ko yung sakit na yan para mabago ka. Para mag-trust ka. Puro ka Korean novela. Ngayon, nag-quiet time ka. Anybody here? <laughs> Nung nagkasakit ka, puro ka, puro ka ng ngayong Bible. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Kambang mo ako. Ano-ano mga pinagsasasabihin mo? Puro ka alam mo. Ja, Korean novela. A, 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 ano yan? Anyo nga sa'yo! <laughs> Ngayon, nagkasakit ka. Ah, patay mo na yung TV. Nahihilo ko. Magba-Bible verse. O di, sabi ni Lord, sige, hanggat ni dumadating si Jesus. Okay? Hindi ka gagaling muna para magbasa ka ng Bible hanggang mamatay ka. Ano ba di here? Eh, kung yun ang day, kung yun ang way, kasi mahal ka ni Lord. I'm a father of two children, di ba? The two daughters. No malilit yan, hindi yung gusto nila masusunod. Sometimes nasusunod, dahil sa mami nila. <laughs> Pero kung alam mo, ikakasama nila, magdi-dinner kayo sa buffet, gusto niyang mag-cotton candy, bibigyan ba na sa katutak na cotton candy? Na na, wait. Hindi ko ka lang cotton candy, kasi may buffet tayo. So sometimes, God is saying, wait, no, or steady ka lang. Stay ka lang. I have something better for you. Sometimes we have to learn to say no to the good so that the best will come. Yung mga dalaga dyan. Pastor, lalaki naman si. Antindi ng kriteriya mo. Basta lalaki. Christian ba? Lord, lalaki, lalaki to Lord. Christian ba? Lord, matututo yan. So, guys, consider it. Pure joy. Whenever. Everybody say, whenever. Don't you just wish. Sinulat na lang dyan, if ever. Or, sinulat na lang sa ni James, just in case. No, no, no. The word there is whenever, sigurado may pagdadaanan kang troubles. Because in this world, we're gonna face a lot of trouble. We're gonna face a lot of problem, especially if the problem is your face. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Ang hirap na magtingin mo sa lamin, ano? So our response, look up here, the response is pure joy, unadulterated joy. Hindi ka tumantuwa na may sakit ka, no, no, no. Lord, I know there's a result. I know I'm entering into a trials of testing, just like Job. I know I will come out better after this. What happened when we fully consider being joyful? Tingnan natin, ano yung result? It says there, for you know, I love this. <laughs> Alam nyo, in James, yun ang quiet time nyo ngayon, ha, for the next six weeks, ha, please lang. Bawat word, ang sarap namnamin. Tingnan, for you know, ina-assume niya pag born again ka, na you have the gospel in you, dapat alam mo to. Hindi ito yung core question ni God, sandali. Parang hindi ko alam to ah. I didn't sign up for this ah. Ayoko lang mapunta sa impyerno, kaya ako nag-born again. Pero kung may test-test pa, forget it. No, no, no. What James is saying, alam mo to. And this is needed, this testing. This is just a test. Anybody here? You're like me. The most dreaded sentence when you're a student is what? Get one half sheet of paper. Tama ba? 
mas may nakakatakot doon. Pag wala kang papel. <laughs> wala kang ang papel, malamang wala kang isagot, di ba? Kaya nung nagkopyahan sila, Junjun at si Moy Moy, Junjun, anong sinagot mo? Wala, i-blanco ako, pambihira ka. Eh, hey, ako rin, blanco, baka akala ni teacher, nagkodi ko tayong dalawa, nagkopyahan tayo. <laughs> For you know that this is just a test. Here's a question, look up here, look, this is very important. Do you know this? Alam mo ba to? Alam mo ba na yung pinagdadaan mo if you're a Christian, okay? Pag makasalanan ka, consequence yan, alright? Okay, nandadaya ka sa tax, edi maluluging, eh, ano yung consequence Pero I'm talking about Christian living. I'm talking about you're doing everything because you're in line with God's will. And then things happen. Nakakasakit ang born again, nalulugin negosyo, namamatay, because this is a fallen world, okay? So, alam mo ba that this is just a test? Because oftentimes, here's our equation of blessing. More money, more happy. This is just your equation, my equation before. Pag may pera, ikwig sabihin, blessed. Kaya nga hirap ka mag-invite ng mga mayayaman. May kamag-anak ka bang mayaman? Kung kamag-anak niyo ako, di meron na sana kayong kamag-anak na mayaman, but we're not relatives. Pero ano yung mga kamag-anak mo na yung pito kotse, tapos alam mong hardcore do sa faith nila, whether kung ano-ano, feng shui, whatever. Ang hirap dalhin sa born again, di ba? Ang unang sasabihin, no, kung magmulasin pa ako dyan. Ano ba yung mga burn again, burn again yun na yan? Because they're thinking, their mindset, more money, more blessed. More money, more uh, a favor from God. Pag nakasakit ka, ang question na God, may ginawa kang kasalanan, ano? But na lugi negosyo mo, hindi ka, hindi ka kasi nagdasal sa ganito. Kaya yung feng shui will never work for Christian because it only promises material wealth. As long as you obey, yung, yung pintuan mo, nilagay mo sa south. Eh, taga north ka, ang hirap. <laughs> Parito yung South. We have a friend. I, I, I'm, I'm serious. We have a friend who, who was told by the Feng Shui master, uh, I mean, this is a big house in, in Valle Verde. Super rich. Yung pintuan nila para kang nasa Central Bank. I'm not even kidding. Ang laki. Pintuan pa lang yung tipong tatlong medyo magbubukas. And one time, the Feng Shui master told them, do not pass by this door for the whole year of 2016. Ang yayaman, dumadaan doon sa maid's quarter. Eh, nag small group kami ron. Pag wala yung magulang, kami lahat, pati ito tayo dumadaan. <laughs> eh, medyo may kalaki ang paychang ko. <laughs> bawal daanan yung main, I'm serious, bawal daanan yung main door because mamalasen. Because more money, more favor from God. But as Christians, this is not our equation. <laughs> Our reward is in heaven. We might be blessed here, financially or not, but it doesn't matter. What awaits us is far greater blessing, isn't it? At hindi naman nagtago si Jesus, yung tipong, sige na, mag-born again na kita, na na-born again ka, ang dami palang kasama na itong kas- ka- ano, trouble. No, no, no. He was a front from the beginning. I have told you these things. Sabi ni Jesus sa mga disciple niya, so that in me you may have peace. In this world, sino na nakatira sa world na to? Nakatira ka dito? Hindi ka, na, hindi ka na taga Pluto, ano? <laughs> in this world, you're living in this world, you'll have trouble. Hindi naman sinabi ni Jesus na you will be trouble-free. Na you will be zero trouble if you're living in this world and you abide in me. No, 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 no. I mean, he's very upfront. We're going to experience trouble because there's a purpose for trouble. There's a, there's a result. When we find it, Lord, my purpose kind, I'm going to face it with joy. Tinan natin, ano yung result? For you know that the testing of your faith produces, wow, I love this, because adversities are productive when faced with joy. It produces something. And ang pupudus niya is steadfastness. Everybody say steadfastness. And then this verse seems to communicate, okay, that is steadfastness or persevering cannot be produced without trials. Tama ba? Kasi, ang tindi ng logical flow. Consider, what? Pure joy. Kailan? When you face troubles. Bakit? For you know. Why? That the testing of your faith will produce in you something. And that steadfastness is, faith is like a muscle. That's the analogy. If you stress it to the limit, it gets stronger. Ano ba din gym ka? I tried once. Nasaktan ako, kinalimutan ko na forever, okay? Pero sa inyo na love going to gym, masasaktan yung muscle mo, okay? When you stress it to the limit, it gets stronger, not weaker. 
when our faith is threatened and tested and stretched to the breaking point, the result is greater capacity. Everybody say greater capacity. To endure what? To endure what James, James called uh, uh, to endure uh, steadfastness. Do we will have endurance and steadfastness? I mean, Joseph spent 13 years suffering in Pharaoh, uh, as a bahin in Pharaoh, as a, as a prison for 13 years. He was promised something, but for 13 years. See, Peter was three years in the making, from sand to the rock. Si Paul, ah, naka-unly trial si Paul, sang katutak ni si Paul, na shipwreck, nakagat ng, ang daming pinagdaanan niya. Si David, lahat sila, they endured trials. Kaya nakakatakot ang mga spoiled brats na mga bata. Anybody here? Huwag na natin pag-usapan kung spoiled brat ka. Halata naman. Kasi wala dito. You know, yung mga parents na helicopter mom, anybody, may kilala kayong helicopter mom? Hmm? Yung parang umiikot-ikot lagi doon sa mga anak. Oh, uh, yung may bimpo sa likod, may bimpo sa harap, may bimpo sa gilid, may bimpo. Pati yung paanan, may bimpo pa rin. Baka magkapawi si Jun. Jun! Kinontain mo in a bubble. You've shielded from every pain. Kaya nung nag-aral, hindi niya alam na pumipila pala ang tao. Because ikaw, pinet mo lahat, lahat. Inano mo, binigay mo lahat ng luho. Eto na, mag-aaral ng college. Pipila pala. Oh my gosh, ang haba ng pila. Ha? Habang pila? Pumila ka sa LRT, yung nakakapalitan talaga ng muka. <laughs> Nakita mo yung, yung pain, minsan ng mga batang spoiled? Ang higsi ng threshold. Because the parents made them think the world revolves around you. Walang muscle na na-train. Binibigay lahat. Ako, medyo aburido ako sa mga kumakain ng dinner. Pag may ka-dinner kami ni Grace sa bahay. Tapos yung anak nag ipad Huwag ka nang magtas ng kamay. Ikaw yun. <laughs> yung anak nag ipad kumakain. Susubuan. O, oh, susubo. Handali lang dana. Ata. Kasi kung yung anak mo nasusunog sa pagkainan, eh, saan ka pa in control? Hello? Kung sa pagkainan, hindi mo makonto, bawal mag-iPad, pag kumakain, mag-usap tayo, tinginan sa mata. Nasa iPad. Eh kasi, mas no, alam mo na, mga bata ngayon. Hindi. Kung anak ko yan, hindi na siya ngayon. Baka nakalipas na siyang bata. <laughs> I'm serious. Mga magulang, hindi nyo makocover ang anak nyo 24-7. There will come a time, magtatrabaho yan, magtatime in yan, magkakaroon ng challenges siya. I hope and pray na natrain nyo sila to persevere. Pag hindi, kawawa ka. Look at the Bible, yung mga favorite, yun ang worst. Favorite si Joseph. Ano ginawa ng mga kapatid? Pinatay. Buti, binuhay. Dahil sayang, pera din. Pag mga favorite, delikado. Si Jacob, favorite ng nanay niya. Sino yung mga mama's boy? Huwag ka lang magtas ng kamay. Kilala kita. Nakatira ka pa rin sa nanay mo, okay? Kahit ang dami nyo ng anak. Guys, look up here. We need to be stretched. And let steadfastness have its full effect. So, flow lang. Consider it. Pure joy. Kailan? Pagka masarap ang buhay. No, 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 no. no. Pure joy, even tough times. Bakit? Pag nag-persevere ka magkakaroon ka ng steadfastness. At yung steadfastness na yon lalakas ka and you will experience the full effect. I like that word, and let. It's something that is natural. If you keep joyful in all location, yung steadfastness will be the natural fruit. You see, joy cannot be manufactured. Kailangan po pagdaanan yan, according to John Piper, I love this, strange as it may seem, one of the primary purposes of being shaken by suffering is to make our faith more unshakable. Wow. Kaya niyayanit tayo ni Lord. Para yung mga pinangahawakan mo, yung mga pungsoy na yan, yung wete, yung mga loto na akala mo, diyan ka mabibless ni Lord. Si shaken ka ni Lord. At pag sineshake ka na, yung matitira, those are the unshakable. Believe me, matitira lang si God. So kaya ikaw ngayon na parang ang dami mo kinakapitan apart from God, hmm. God loves you enough. The way, just, just like I love my daughters. As a parent, we love our daughters and children so much. 
Ayaw mo silang tingnan na lang na napapariwara. Paano na pag wala kami? No, no, no. You're gonna shake them. And what's left are the unshakable. And that is God Himself. And, and sabi ito, hayaan mo lang. Let steadfastness have its full effect. So that you may, here's the result. Here's the final result. When you keep being steadfast, you will be perfect. <laughs> A perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. We can't manufacture maturity. There's a process. Joy, look up here, it's very important. We cannot manufacture joy because joy is a gift of the Holy Spirit. And that's why yung mga taong pinipilit maging masaya, na walang Diyos, it's short-lived. Because it should stem from something. The Holy Spirit gives us joy. You don't manufacture it, you don't buy it, you can't buy it. Joy is a fruit. Have you ever seen a mango tree na nanginginig? Ah, oh! Nag-e-effort siyang mamunga? Nakakita ka ba ng manggang nag-e-effort mamunga? Oh my gosh, nanginginig yung mangga. Oh, oh, oh. Yung nag-ginig siya, nag-e-effort, ang tagal namang mamunga. Oh, oh, oh. Wala. Just, 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 just place them in the right environment. My son, my too big, Merong pataba. And then eventually it will grow. Are you listening? Alagaan mo lang yung garden. It will flourish. Ikaw ba nagpapatubo ng mangga? Ikaw ba yung tipong, Mamunga ka na, hukarabasyan, dalabak ka. <laughs> Meron ba nitong nagdadasal kang mamunga yung mangga nyo? Ang trabaho mo, galing siya sa environment na may tubig, may sunlight, huwag mo, ilag- huwag mo itanim yung mangga sa ilalim ng sasakyan mo at hindi mamumunga yan. So we can't manufacture joy because it's a gift. Are you listening? Kaya ikaw na born again dito, na nahirap na hirap, Pastor, alam mo, hindi ko kaya yan. Yeah, of course. Baka wala yung Holy Spirit in you. So it's something you desire. And we don't have the time to read this, but read the following verses. If you lack wisdom in, in, in uh, handling adversity, you ask God, and He'll give you without finding fault. Amen? Sabi ng psalmist, Who am I in heaven but you? There's nothing on earth that I desire besides you. Yes, my flesh and my heart may fail. Wow, I love this. But God is the strength of my heart. And my portion forever. You may be facing difficulties today. You may be facing dark times today. And some of you, you came at the right time. You've been attending, pero parang hindi para sa akin yung preaching. And somehow, ngayon, parang sa'yo mo, akin to. Some of your first time, and you're saying, sakto yung invite mo. And, and I, I, I guarantee you, sasabihin mo mamaya sa nag-invite sa'yo, sinabi mo ba sa pastor yung problema ko? Parang kinuwento mo ko eh. No. God is talking to you. The, at the end of the day, everything else may fail, but God is the strength of my heart, our hearts. And then God is saying, look up here. May, kad- may, kasug- may kadugtong to eh. Hindi lang kayo nagpapasang minsan ng Bible eh. Tila niya to. Ay, si God talaga puro trouble na lang. Look at the verse. I have told you this thing so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. Look at the last verse. But take heart. Everybody say, take heart. I mean, take heart. Yung parang, Take heart. <laughs> yun ang ibig sabihin doon. Yung parang, oh, hindi, wala ko ba isip na Tagalog eh. Okay, dalin mo yung puso mo. Ang pangit pakinggan. But take heart. Tumatag ka. Because I have overcome the world. Come on, let's give God praise. God keeps us through trials. God sustains us in trials. And I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Je, puro ka ganyan. If you are in my shoes, that's the reason why we're having this. This is not my idea. This is not my opinion. This is God telling you, I have overcome the word, anak. Ang kulit mo lang. Pilit mo kinekeri. Anak, keri kita. Ako bahala dyan. Just be at peace. Sino dito restless ka sa dami mong problema? You're restless. You're thinking ways para makabayad ng utang, makabayad ng kita. At, at sobrang restlessness mo, 
you forget paano mag-quiet time na. You forgot about God. Nakalimutan mo na kung paano ma-in love ulit kay Lord. Because you're too inundated. You're too parang burdened by too much worries in life. It will choke you. I'll tell you something. Sabi ni Lord, just let it go. Let go and let God. That's our response. Joy, the result is we'll be Christ-like. We'll be complete, not lacking in anything. If it will bring us to a place, Lord, the cancer may still be here, <laughs> but I'm complete because I'm looking forward to another R, which is a reward, which is what we want, right? We want rewards. Ano ba yung reward? Because sometimes we're so earthly focused na hanggang dito na lang to. Kung hindi ako gumaling, walang kwenta na itong buhay na to. Kung hindi ako makapagkat ng mapangasawa, eh, ala na kwenta yung buhay ko na to. Kung hindi bumalik yung asawa ko, ala. Sometimes we're so earthly focused, thinking na, ang ganito lang ba? Ang kaya ni Lord sa'yong i-blessed ka. But you see, those people who died, those Christian martyrs, they're so forward-looking to the next life. Kaya hinihiwa na sila ng buhay. I'm talking, walang alistisya nung araw, ha? Hinihiwa sila ng buhay. Tinatali sa dalawang side at tinihila ng dalawang kabayo. They're being sold into two. Pinapakain sila ng buhay sa liyon, niluluto ng buhay. Pero sila, ang, ang, ang sasabihin lang, recant your God. I, 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 talikuran mo lang Diyos mo. <laughs> Sabi nung isa, ba't ko talikuran yung Lord ko? Eh pag pinatay mo ko, nandun kami sa langit. Eternity naghihintay sa amin. And that's why yung mga gwardiya nilang Romans, karamihan, naboborn again din. Because it's so contagious, the gospel is so demonstrated. Sabi ng mga guard, sobra yung hope na to. Tayo mga Romano, ang hope natin na kay Zeus lang, na hindi natin alam kung mabait by God na yun or no. But these people are real. Kaya most of the time, you, you read uh, Martyr's book of, uh, uh, Fax's book of Martyrs, there are cases na yung gwardiya, nakasama, okay, na magbibitay sa kanya, ended up, dalawa silang binibitay. <laughs> Sasabihin nung, ano, pati ako, damay mo na ako, bakit? Nabor na na ako. Kasi patay mo man ako ngayon yung katawan ko, hindi mo mapapatay because they're looking forward to something far beyond this earthly blessing can bring. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial for when he has stood the test. And that's my prayer for all of us. Because it's not a question kung magkakatest tayo, we will always have tests. My hope and prayer as your pastor, I love you enough to tell you this, I just hope that we will stand the test. Because one day, we're going to receive the crown of life. That's not eternal life because he's talking to Christians, to born again. So we already have the eternal life. No one can snatch that away from us. So what he's talking about is a, it's a heavenly reward. The Bible talks about five different kinds of crown. We don't have the time to talk about it. It may merit another series. But he's talking about a crown of, crown of life. May crown of righteousness, different crowns. And what this verse is saying, which God has promised to those who love Him. And these crowns, I don't know, pagdating sa langit, we have rewards. Because yung mga bad na tao, they're going to be called upon once again. They're going to thrown it throughout eternity sa hell. But tayo na mga tinanggap ang Panginoong Jesus, we have the gospel. We will have awardings. So if you're born again, look forward. I hope na meron ka makukuwang crown. And one of the crowns you need to aspire to, I would suggest the crown of life. Because lahat tayo magkakaroon ng mga testing. And I don't know, ano gagawin sa crown? Pag nag, I sometimes kasi we are so limited to what's gonna happen to heaven, okay? In heaven, rather. Pagdating sa langit, some of us were thinking, para tayong nasa si Cupido, may mga namamana lang, hindi ganun ng heaven, Right? And, and, and hopefully we'll get, uh, we'll have another series about heaven. It's not just we're gonna go there, parang tayo nakamang nakaputi, lumulusot-lusot, Casper the friendly ghost, hindi ganon. <laughs> we're gonna do a lot of things to heaven, and the heaven, it will come here, the, the new heavens and the new earth, it will be renewed as if before, yung walang kasalanan sa mundo. So what we're gonna do there, I don't know. But Revelations gave us a glimpse for those people who had the crowns. And it says here in Revelation, maganda to, it's a good, uh, 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 parang uh, something to look forward to. The 24 elders fall down before Him who is seated on the throne and worship Him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne. I don't know, they, maybe they have this, th this 
crowns of life or kung ano mang crown ako nila, and they have something to offer before God. Grace and I uh, encountered this one of our members. Sabi niya, alam mo pastor, tinuruan ako ng nanay ko, every time I go to another house and I'm invited, wag na wag kang pupunta na wala kang dala. Kahit ano dala niya. It may be a small puto, pandisal, basta lagi siya may dala. And, and, and I was thinking when I was reading this, imagine yung wala kang maibigay before the king. I don't know, it just keeps me parang looking forward to getting that crown, that reward, that one day I have something to offer before my God. And I hope and pray that all of us, more than the healing, it's encountering the healer himself. More than the blessing, I hope you're, you're, you, you long for the blessor. More than the gift, long for the giver. Because this momentary troubles and affliction, says here, sa 2 Corinthians 4, 17, is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all. Wala siyang katumbas. Everybody say momentary. Whatever we're going through right now, it's momentary. It's temporary. Don't think that it's the end of the world. We're gonna live throughout eternity with our God and Maker. So whatever you're going through right now, I hope and pray that we will, we will fix our eyes on God. As I end now, sino bang peg natin? Well, see Jesus Himself. Jesus encountered it Himself. He had bad times. I mean, talking about being crucified. But here's Jesus in Hebrews 12, 2, describing about Jesus, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy, everybody say joy. So my joy down na nilata kay Jesus. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and now sitting at the right hand of the throne of God. There, my friend, is what we're talking about. There's the response of Jesus to sa, sa, sa crucifixion, he had joy because alam niya, greater rewards awaits. Makakasama ko tong mga long lost children of my father. So there's joy set before him. That's why he can be steadfast. I mean, we, talk, we had a lot of talk, preaching about crucifixion. He can endure the shame and the pain because he's looking forward to that reward. Well done, good and faithful son. He pleased the father. And that's my prayer for all of us today. That we're going to fix our eyes on Jesus. He's the author and perfecter of our faith. In endure niya yung cross because there's joy. Let me just encourage you with a testimony. I invited someone, an office mate. She's a good friend and an office mate namin dito sa church. And nung pini-prepare namin to sermon na to, wala na kang maisip na tao who have gone through a lot. And you're going to hear her story. But then, I hope and pray that she can minister to us because yung ginawa niya in facing that story, hopefully we can learn something from her story. Let me call on stage uh, Maylene Dolores. Can you come? Okay, let's give a round of applause for Maylene. I'll give you the stage, Maylene. In November of 2014, after being confined in the ICU for almost a month, my dear father passed away. It was very difficult to have lost someone so dear to me. I loved my tatay very much. Then in July of 2015, while I was still grieving at the loss of my father, my world was shaken once more. Right after the big year prayer and fasting of 2015, I went to see an uncle surgeon. The doctor said, it's stage 3 invasive ductal carcinoma, or stage 3 breast cancer. Everything suddenly turned blank. It wasn't sinking in. I had earnestly prayed during the prayer and fasting that the lump would disappear, but it didn't. I consulted two more doctors, but they all gave the same diagnosis. I prayed and declared every day that the tumor would be gone. My family, Christian friends, and leaders prayed for me as well, but nothing happened. Then I decided to sing worship songs. I was trying to worship God, still hoping that through this, I will receive my miracle. But a still small voice asked me, are you worshiping me for who I am? Or are you worshiping because you want something from me? I began to weep. I felt so guilty. 
I thought that if I do something for God, I'd earn his favor to get what I desperately prayed for. But the same voice told me, just be still and know that I am God. It was a reality I had to face, but I was reassured I wasn't going to face it alone. God reminded me that he is in control. On July 14, 2015, I was scheduled to have a modified radical mastectomy. It was my first time to be admitted in a hospital. I didn't know what to expect. I was anxious and giddy at the same time, but I felt the peace and presence of God the whole time I was there. Praise God, the surgery was successful. Day after day, as I looked out the window, I, I was praising God for his goodness and provision. I was declaring that I was cancer free, that I've been healed, that it's done. Then my surgeon said, you need to undergo chemotherapy. I was still healing from my recent wound. And then chemotherapy? I was begging God to spare me from undergoing chemotherapy. I saw the pain and struggle my mother and brother went through because of cancer and chemotherapy until we lost them. I was in agony for a month. After a month of praying, I decided to go through it. In November of 2015, four months after my surgery, the sessions started. The doctors were telling me, oh, you're gonna miss your long hair. But I was in faith that my hair won't fall. <laughs> but after several weeks of chemo, everything was gone. I looked at myself in the mirror and saw someone who was bald, broken, wounded, and ugly. But a gentle voice whispered to me, you are beautiful. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are special because I made you. And you are special because I love you. I then realized that apart from God and his grace, I would have gone crazy or have been depressed. He supernaturally saved me from my moments of self-pity and pain. The effects of chemo weren't easy. So people were surprised that I was still going to work. I would walk, going to work with wobbly legs. I would sit for a while because I was getting dizzy. I also needed to protect myself from any virus or bacteria because of my lowered immune system. But all the more I wanted to go out. I needed to see God's beautiful creation because every time I would see the trees and grass swaying and hear the birds chirping, I would be reminded of God's sovereignty and goodness. After receiving five shots of an immune system booster, my whole body was in pain, palpitating, and tears were falling uncontrollably. I didn't know whether to sit or lie down. I couldn't find any comfortable position. I then asked, is this it, Lord? Will you be taking me home? Then God prompted me to open my window. I saw the full moon shining so brightly lighting up my room. I fell asleep feeling God's comfort and warm embrace. The next morning, I woke up completely relieved from the intense pain. So I said, thank you, Lord, for giving me another day. Since then, I wake up with my hands held high, thanking God for the gift of each new day. But as we know, living with, a, with an illness is not easy. Perseverance is really important. There were moments I had to line up by myself to get financial assistance at agencies like PCSO, Malacanang, DOH, and DSWD. But in July of 2017, that was my last chemotherapy. But before being discharged, I found blood in my stool. My oncologist referred me to a gastroenterologist who immediately recommended that I go through colonoscopy since both my mother and bro brother died of colon cancer. It was another hurdle. I said, God, I'm already done with all my chemo, and this is supposed to be my graduation. Lord, please spare me. After the procedure and all the tests, I met with my doctor. She said all the results were good. I am cancer-free. Now... I'm still amazed at how God has carried me through this journey. 
He surrounded me with family and friends who tirelessly showered me with love, support, and prayers. God's provision was overwhelming. There may have been delays in some of my sessions, but I didn't have to borrow money. He has provided me with more than enough. Things may not always happen the way we want them to or when we want them to, but we can trust in a God who is always sovereign, good, and knows all things. Our capabilities and resources may be limited, but we can trust in a God who is limitless and owns everything. With all our imperfections and flaws, we can trust in a God who is perfect and loving. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I know it's easier said than done, but I pray for God's grace for each one of us to have faith that pleases Him, to always hope with such joy, and to have a growing intimacy with Him. More than the breakthroughs and blessings, may we seek the one who has already given us all things. But thanks be to God, who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. God has already won the victory for us. We are more than conquerors. Oh, How many of you were encouraged? Maylene, can you stay here? Grabe, no? Wow. I'm just so encouraged with the life of this woman. Kasi po, uh, uh, kasama ko siya every day, uh, Tuesday to Friday, every meeting. And I'm so encouraged lang. Minsan kami na discourage Pati tinang namin si Mahilin, oo oh, nga, no? wala tayong karapatang mag-discourage. And I guess all of us here today, we're going through different seasons of our lives. I'm not saying, mas malit pinagdadaanan mo. No, no, no. It's, lahat tayo may pinagdadaanan. But I just want to encourage you, regardless of what we're ever going, what, whatever we're going through right now, we have the same God. The God that she's worshiping is the God we are worshiping. Amen? Why don't we all stand? Mahilin, okay lang ba? Pag-pray mo lang yung mga tao rito. Maybe some of us here today are facing a... Uh, 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 sicknesses um, phys- I'm talking about physical sicknesses if, if you're here or you have a friend or family members who's battling whatever cancer or as, as, as simple as uh, back pain I believe the prayer for a righteous person is powerful and effective right so my limb is powerful in fact ako, I'm sick din ngayon because of uh, stomach uh, problem so I'll be raising my hands as well so if you're believing God for healing why don't you raise your hand and believe God the prayer for a righteous person is powerful. Yes, Lord. Panginoon, maraming maraman salamat po. Yes, Lord. Because you're sovereign and good. Thank you that you see each person who's raising his and her hand right now. I declare in the name of Jesus, yes. complete healing. Amen. And complete recovery, quick recovery and yes, restoration Lord. of health. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that you have promised that each one of us will enjoy life and life to the full. Praise God. Fruitful, long, and healthy life. Thank you, Lord, that we can hope in you and that you will never fail us. And I pray, Lord, that as we go through these testings and trials, that we will always trust you. Amen. That we put our complete trust and hope in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen. We trust you. We declare this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let me pray for you, Maylene, as well. Can we extend our hands to Maylene? Because the doctor said it, it will take five years to really say you're cancer-free. Pag-ilang years pa lang ba, Maylene? Two years. So, pero si declare na niya, cancer-free na siya, okay? Makapag-iintay yung tatlong taong ngayon, pero ngayon cancer-free. So, Lord, we declare that, Lord God, the proclamation of Maylene to, to the power, Lord God, that you have given her, Lord, to declare and renounce, Lord God, whatever work of the enemy. Lord, this cancer, Lord God, will not come back again. We, we Whatever, Lord God, you pinaniwalaan niya, you said in your word, according to your faith, it shall be done unto you. So, Lord, we declare that she's already cancer-free. Lord, after five years, iba validate na lang ng doctor what she already uh, uh, proclaimed last year. So Lord, thank you for Maylin. May she continue to be uh, a source of inspiration to a lot of us, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Maylin? Now for those of you, I just sent some of you here today. Uh, Jeff, you've been talking about people, na Christian, you've been talking about the born again, and, and, and I'm, I'm sorry, you missed out yung last uh, series, but 
I'm going to offer this to you today. The Bible says, if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and confess in your mouth that He is alive, you will be saved. The Bible says, for those who believe in me, I've given the right to become children of God. I'm sure we will do ang kayo sa amin dito. Ito mga born again ito. Yak ng iyak. It's just an uncontainable joy. Now we're looking forward to something far beyond money can buy. And sometimes, hindi naman kami parang nagmamalinis. No, no, no. We have struggles for sure. But we're looking forward to far greater blessing which is eternity na naghihintay po. That's why if you haven't given your life to Christ, it starts by a simple acknowledgement, Lord, I want to receive you as my Lord and Savior. All of us have gone through that situation na talagang parang, alam mo yung wall na, parang your face, wala. There's no way but to look up and tell God, pagod na ako. Because minsan nakakapagod, ano? Ganda buhay, sama, gaganda buhay, tapos napapagod ka because you're manufacturing joy. You can't. It's a gift. And there's one gift that God wants to have you today. And that's the gift of salvation. The gift of eternal life. So if that's you today, this is the first time you've heard such sermon about being a child of God. It starts by raising your hand and acknowledging, Pastor, I want to know that God. I want to know Him in a more personal way. Of course you know Him. But then again, you want to know Him in a more personal way and deeper way. So as every head's bowed down and eyes closed, if that's you this afternoon, you want to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior and experiencing the joy that is not determined by circumstances, but it's going to be our being. If you want to receive Christ today, raise your hand and just, just acknowledge, Lord, I want to receive you. Come on. I know it's your first time. Maybe some of you have been here for the longest time. It doesn't matter. That raising of hand is an acknowledgement. Lord, pagod na ako. I want to receive you as my Lord. Yes. Wow, ang dami naman. Praise God. Anybody here, you want to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, at the back. I see that hand. For those of you raising your hands, can you pray this prayer with me? Sabi mo lang, Lord Jesus, thank you. Salamat po for dying for me. I know I'm a sinner and I cannot save myself. Starting today, Lord Jesus, I repent from all my sins. At mula po ngayon, Lord Jesus, tinatanggap kita bilang aking Diyos at tagapagligtas. Manahan ka sa puso ko I receive you, Lord Jesus. I honor you today as my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. For those of you who raise your hand, just talk to the person who invited you or you can come here in front, we'll pray for you. Let's just end in prayer. Father, we thank you that we can find joy in the midst of uh, uh, tribulations, in the midst of adversities because our joy is not dependent on those things. Our joy is totally anchored on you, the author and perfecter of our faith. We honor you, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen, amen. God bless you. If you need prayers, you'll be here. Thank you.